Both of these glues create a bond that is stronger than the wood when you use the proper application methods, and they both are waterproof once cured, and they will fill voids. On the negative side, they both release some toxic chemicals and have a bad smell when being applied, so you should probably do it in a well-ventilated area, and they both require a few days to cure to full strength. The two-part epoxy strengths are that it can uh, fill a much deeper hole. It's not really kind of limited like the uh, polyurethane glue is. I actually filled a knot hole in my kitchen on my uh, countertop, and uh, it's about three-quarter inch wide, deep, and tall, and it is perfectly solid and it will hold fine. And it also can be and should be varnished for that matter. Now, that being said, it does produce a solid finish, so it's not going to look unsightly if you do color it and uh, give it the right shape, and it is shapeable. And uh, lastly, the epoxy does carry a much longer shelf life. Two-part epoxy's weaknesses are pretty major. Now, one, it requires a proper mix of resin and hardener, and if you don't get that mixture, the ratio right, then you're probably not going to have the right strength. A little bit off isn't going to affect it too much, but if you get gobs in there of resin where it didn't get mixed in or hardener, then you're probably going to find it doesn't really hold in those areas. The application is a pretty big pain in the ass. It actually requires that you get a really good, solid, even coat across both surfaces to be joined that is uh, going to end up being about at least a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch thick after you've uh, applied all of the uh, hardener and it's absorbed into the wood. So with that, it, it can be difficult because it requires pretty much twice the work that uh, you know the other one would require. And the cost is, is really prohibitive. The cans that I got of the epoxy is totally $100, uh, including the uh, mini pumps. And um, it breaks down to probably about $10 a gun is what I figure. And lastly, when it does cure, it does produce, produce quite a bit of heat. So you got to be kind of careful if you're mixing a large amount that you don't uh, melt the container it's in and, uh, or, or burn yourself because it can get that hot. Not a real problem if you're mixing, mixing smaller amounts, if you do them one layer at a time. Um, but if you're getting a large container, it certainly can be problematic. The polyurethane glue's strengths are pretty significant. Uh, number one, the odor, while it did smell bad at first, it quickly went away. Actually, after just a few hours, I really couldn't smell it, and it was sitting just a few feet from me. There's no mixing, so there's no way you can get the mixture wrong. Uh, application is a breeze. Spray some water on, wait a bit, splash some glue on, as long as you get a good even coat. You don't need to worry, you know, if you coat, put too much or if there's, uh, you know, too little because as long as you have some, it will expand and, and make a very strong seam. Now, the application is just, just so simple. It's so, so much easier. Um, cost is also pretty different. It was uh, an 8-ounce bottle that I used for about $8. And a um, dollar an ounce, it's not really too expensive considering I only uh, should have used maybe about two ounces to do uh, each uh, gun stock. So that's not really that expensive to me. And um, that's with using a retail size glue container. If I were to get something like a gallon size tight bond jug, I know that I can get those for about $18. And that's going to be even more savings. So there's really no comparison in cost either. The polyurethane glue's weaknesses are pretty minor. I gotta admit, I really had to stretch to kind of find something that would be negative about it because there really isn't much. Now, the finish isn't solid. Um, it's actually a f kind of a foam or foam insulation type finish. So if it's on the surface, it's not gonna look that good if it uh, falls in a void. Now, if that's the case, you could easily just dig out that area and fill it in with something that's gonna be more appropriate. Yeah, I don't think it's going to hold color very well, so while you could dye it to maybe minimize it some, I don't really think it's necessary, nor is it going to really be that visible, because you can easily get very, very thin seams. And lastly, the, the only real kind of minor thing, and that is that it has a limited shelf life. About a year after you open the package, it's garbage. Now, with a $20 gallon container, hey, you know what, if I use half of it, I think I'm going to have my money, you know, it's going to already have paid me off. I'm not going to have to worry about uh, wasted money in that case. Um, so it's really not that expensive. So I think it's pretty clear that the actual polyurethane glue does make a much better bond. Um, I do know, as a side fact, that there are some uh, 
lamination uh, businesses that use it for making like plywood. Um, it does form a really strong bond that's waterproof. Um, so it's just all around a, a much better product with really no negatives that I know of. Um, no real negatives. The um, epoxy is certainly can be a useful product to have on hand for filling some knots and things like that, but it's not something that I think I'm ever going to try and join a uh, laminated stock again with. It's just too hard to work with, too uh, expensive, and really not worth the effort. You've been watching NB Gunsmith. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this.